So in this episode, I'm covering one of the cornerstones of civilized society. Now, what are some of the things an outsider thinks of when they hear Ireland? Green, leprechauns, paddy caps, all that jazz? Yeah, insanely complicated ball sports and uniform clad drudgery masquerading as education are all fine and dandy, but they're not really universal signifiers of Irishness, are they? So that being said, potatoes. My name is Connor, and this is Being Irish in Ireland. Is there such a thing as Irish cuisine? Yeah, sort of. I mean, I don't think Ireland so much as dishes, dish being a group of ingredients that have merged into a cohesive whole, as sort of mad scientist cobblings together of disparate foods and there, there's your dinner. And sometimes that's great. Sometimes two things that you wouldn't think would go together just do and it's a match made in heaven. But as we'll see, the Irish are fucking nuts with the different types of foods they like to combine. So throughout this episode, we'll be walking the line between popcorn and Maltesers and popcorn and periwinkles. So you're on holiday and you've woken up in your hotel room overlooking the mountains of Connemara or your Dublin hostel overlooking a crack alley and you think, By God, I could jerk it. <laughs> you think, I'm hungry and I want breakfast. So here are your choices. Toast with Lolo, that's butter that doesn't taste like butter. A few cereal choices and no, we don't have Lucky Charms. In fact, up until a few years ago, if you had said something about stealing me Lucky Charms to an Irish person, they wouldn't have had a bull's notion what you were talking about. Actually, here's a list of things you think are Irish but aren't. Don't bring them up in conversation or people will think you're lame. So basically what I'm saying is skip the bullshit and get stuck into this big bastard. It's called a full Irish and it's got three different types of pork. So you can be happy that no part of the animal went to waste, including its sickly sweet precious blood. <laughs> Incidentally, don't confuse a full Irish with a full English. This atrocity comes with beans. The Brits, ruining everything since 1171. Now lunch is the greatest meal of the day, and if you disagree with that statement, stop watching this video. Seriously, I don't want your views. Breakfast is part of the slog of getting up in the morning and going to work, and dinner? Well, we'll get to dinner in a minute, just you wait. In decades past, Ireland was pretty conservative about lunch. Here's what I ate every day for about eight years when I was in school. It's a ham sandwich, or hang sangage. That's it, sliced ham and bread, nothing more. If you're from one of the less fortunate regions of Ireland, you may be more familiar with this tragedy of a midday snack. Yes, it's exactly what it looks like. Potato chips, or crisps, between two slices of white bread. A tato sandwich. In the early 2000s, a new outlet for the purchasing and consumption of edibles came into existence, the deli counter. And from this, we were gifted that most glorious paragon of fine cuisine, the chicken fillet roll. This is the good shit. <laughs> now, I've always taken it for granted that putting breaded chicken salad and a spread of your choice into a baguette isn't exactly rocket science. But more and more, I'm beginning to realize that this is exclusively an Irish thing. And sure, there's Subway, but it's not the same. I mean, prove me wrong here. Let me know in the comment section if you feel your country has also had the idea of putting chicken into some bread and I will fight you in real life. Uppercut! So, on to dinner. And this is where things get sketchy. This is where logic and reason begin to break down for the poor Irish. Remember when I said we love to combine foods that have no business going together? Well, that comes from a particularly sad chapter in Irish history. You see, during the Great Famine there was very little food going around and people had to do the best with what they had. So during this time a type of stew came into existence, called gach bia, into which they put basically anything edible. Corn, black pudding, bread, edible leaves and so on. And this tradition has survived to the present day. Now, what I've just told you is a complete lie, but it's the only explanation I can think of for why you would mix together a big bowl of potatoes and fucking cabbage. This is called colcannon, or depending on your ability to pronounce Irish words, cold cannon, or gold canyon. And if this stuff doesn't get your motor running, how about coddle, which is a literal leftover stew. Mmm, good to know this is actual food and not something that accumulates in a damp shed over the course of several years, because that's what it looks like. If you want my opinion, the best item on the dinner menu isn't cooked by these guys, but rather by these guys. Presenting The Spice Bag, a Chinese innovation not found anywhere in China. Indigenous to Ireland, but devoid of any Irish influence. It can be found in just about any Chinese takeaway here, and it is finger licking good. It's got chicken, more chicken, delicious seasoning of some sort, and if you don't like using plates, you can just eat it out the bag like a fucking animal. Thanks, the Chinese. Can you invent some more dishes just for us? Here are some visual aids to help you. Please examine them closely and do the exact opposite. 